Hey, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're on building a Rams S21 airplane. Uh, first, a quick EAA update. Our chapter hosted a Young Eagles event last weekend. It was very successful. We flew 55 kids. We had seven pilots. We put on an abbreviated ground school and served burgers and dogs. And weather cooperated with us, so it worked out real well. Um, we also did a tower tour at our local Class C airport tower. Uh, it's always interesting to listen and learn and watch uh, men and women operate a tower. Uh, in my opinion, the FAA should modify their hiring and employment practices. Uh, it's more like a military assignment than it is a, an employment, oper employment process. Uh, but that's spoken from someone that was in the private sector his whole career. Um, just an opinion. Uh, in this episode, uh, we continue working on the engine. Uh, I put uh, the ignition wires on, uh, attach them to the coils, uh, run a drain hose from the fuel pump, the engine fuel pump, and then attach the exhaust gas and cylinder head sensors and wires. Um, as previous videos, there's almost no instructions from RANS on how to do any of this. And as a first time builder, I spent as much time researching as I did building. Um, uh, and it's just part of the pro part of the build where you're just going to have to figure things. If you're a first time builder, you're going to have to figure a lot of stuff out. Um, but I muddled through it and uh, not 100 percent sure if it's, a, if it's exactly the way it's supposed to be done. But this is the way I figured it out. And I'll definitely say these are not instructional videos. I'm a first time builder. Uh, this is just documenting my build. People may have interest. Uh, with that, let's jump in, and I think I start with the ignition wires. Uh, here's the part that I found with the uh, fuel pump drain valve. It was back when I put the gasculator on the firewall. I remember I made a note in the book that uh, this was to be done later. At the time, I really didn't know what this was, not having my engine yet. Uh, I just put a note, you know, to... Um, aft side of pump I assumed on the motor and I was correct so I'll get these parts put together this screws into the um, uh, fuel pump that I showed just a second ago and then all this hardware just goes down and rivets into the bottom with a little angle bracket and that's it there's a uh, 90 degree fitting that goes in here and then you've got a fitting that goes into a hose with a clamp this fitting goes on to there, and then it drops down and it fixes to uh, the bottom of the fire. The hose drain is done. I've got the valve in, hooked up to there. The hose is clamped on. It runs down, and then at the bottom, this is riveted in with a stainless steel rivet, this bracket. Then there's this kind of a C-clamp that goes on, and then this is just wire tied, and that's the bottom, and that's, that's the hose drain. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the ignition wires and the coax cables to the um, light speed ignition and to the coils. And if you go to the manual on 1118 and really all they say is uh, connect them and look at the figure and they give you a figure and they just kind of show how the connections are. So for me I've got to run them. I've got my coax in the middle here, so I've got to run them up through the shelf. I'll most likely cut a hole in the shelf here, have it go through the grommets, which are here. I've got to add the grommets here and here and have them come out. And then I think I have to splice the connections uh, that go on to, to the um, coils. The first thing I did is I cut a hole in my avionics shelf and I lined it with some rubber. I super glued down some rubber edging. Then I ran the coax up through the grommets that are in the firewall and just laid them across. The question is, are these little holes, it doesn't give you much play once you get through here to, to uh, clip on the clips. So I've seen others drill these out bigger. I'm going to try one. I've got a grommet on this one down here. I'm going to try the first one and just see how it goes to see if I'm going to leave these holes the same. And underneath a little a learning, I do have my coax cables going to the center and the uh, uh, G3 connections on the outside. I do see that they 
to tell you to put the coax cables on the outside. I'm moving forward without switching these because I don't think it makes that much of a difference as you're just running wires. So I'm going to continue this way and I'll let you know if it doesn't work. Well, I'm on a grommet hunt. Uh, if you look at the baffling uh, picture, you've got one number 22 grommet here, yet you got two grommet holes. And you come over to 22 on the right for the uh, left side, and they're saying one. And if you go back to the other side, they're saying one. But you've got four holes up here. So obviously I'm looking for two more grommets. You know, I've got two for each, or one for each coil, but two for each side, so I've got four. So I've got the two grommets in that were called for in the parts manual, but I can't find the other two. Then you come over here on the side bafflings. You've got your ignition wires that are going to come through here and go down to your spark plugs. But uh, I come to this diagram and, oh, this one, and I look at the sides and they're not showing any holes or any grommets or any parts for those. So I don't even know where to look for the parts for these grommets. Uh, with the ignition wires, you need to take the coax cable. Uh, I cut it, uh, I sh took the shield off at an inch and a quarter, and then using my, where's my little poker? Oh, it's not up here. Using the little spiky poker that you use to align rivets, I pulled the uh, outside insulation off, created a separate band, twisted that, put a heat shrink on it. Now I've got, oh, about a half inch on each end that I can use to put into these clamps. There is an installation manual for the uh, Plasma 3 coils and ignition system. As you get into the beginning of it, they talk about the connectors here using the coax 400. They said there is no polarity issues. This is not a ground in this system. Uh, so and it says it can go to either post. And then it basically just says connect these crimps to the end of the coax. Uh, the other thing is, uh, when you get these finished, the distance between the grommet and the uh, pegs are very short. So I've had to unscrew the coil, move it forward, attach them, move it back. And it's a very tight and kind of uncomfortable fitting here, but that's the only way I can think about doing it. I finished hooking up these uh, coax coil wires using spade mounts. They, they include them with the kit. Um, and then these are all attached. And I connected the ignition wires, ran them through. These grommet holes weren't big enough to get the ignition wires through, so I had to enlarge them and use some of my own grommets. Uh, not a big problem, but just uh, the, the, clearly these, uh, these ends weren't going to go through those the original holes. Then they also supplied some of these wire clips. I just kind of put them where they made a little bit of sense to kind of hold wires together. I'm not sure if that's going to be the final placement of them, but I'm going to move on. That's good enough for now. I've got this box marked uh, four-cylinder Lycoming sensor kit, which is filled with what appears to be the sensors for the exhaust. And on other builder videos, I've seen them putting these and drilling into the exhaust. So I don't see a lot of instructions for this. But I'm going to dig into it and maybe watch videos and see how this all attaches. I'm at a little bit of a loss here with uh, just how to do this. And it may just have to be watching videos. I've unpacked the box. And I've got four of these that are marked 86253. Four of these marked 86255. They're definitely sensor probes. Uh, up here in the barcode, I've got a 7,000, which comes over here and March matches this 7,000. So those are the cylinder head, cylinder head temperature gauges. The other ones marked 7,001 are the exhaust gas temperature. So these are marked 701. So these must be the exhaust gas and the bigger clamp. That would make sense. And they've got ends which are going to, they look like electrical connection ends with no indication. This one is marked a pressure transducer with a number. 
this bag doesn't have any markings at all so I'm gonna have to kind of deduct they look really similar uh, sorry they look similar uh, but there's no the manual doesn't call for two of these this is 150 PSI 150 PSI the other one's supposed to be 30 PSI so I'm assuming this must be the 30 PSI and then an RTD oil temp the only thing I've got left are these three boxes well, I've got okay so I've got I you know there's no question I've got to do some research and figure out how to do this I mean if you've done it once before you're probably laughing at me going don't you know what that is but the answer is no the last engine I put in was in college and don't even know what this goes for so if this is your first engine install you're gonna be left like I am a little bit confused uh, but I've been confused at many spots in this build and no directions so uh, if I were to make one comment about Rands is to get your manuals up to date uh, a lot of first-time builders out there that need need better instructions than what we've got okay as I open the bags for each of these parts here's my four CHT my four EGTs and inside the bag is a set of instructions if I open the instructions up you basically got four lines of instructions it's not very complicated line one is if replacing not replacing line two apply a small amount of anti-seize to the screw threads and insert into the cylinder head thermo well well being a first-time builder not knowing what the cylinder head thermo well is looked at some YouTube's videos and apparently as we get underneath the engine and underneath each cylinder you're gonna see some threaded holes under here and these are apparently our cylinder head thermo wells which the CHT probes get screwed into at about 25 to 30 inch pounds of pressure and remember uh, when you use a crow's foot adapter on your torque wrench uh, there's a formula that changes your torque setting because you've extended the distance of the torquing uh, these crow's feet feet that I've got are about one inch I've got a nine inch handle so I'm adding one inch it's about 10 percent so there's actually a formula you use uh, that if you want a 27 pound let's say foot pounds or inch pounds uh, it's about 10 percent less when you're extending the distance of the crow's foot with the crow's foot the exhaust gas probes install a little bit differently um, it's more of a clamp the probe is you're going to drill a hole into the exhaust pipe and then clamp this on to the exhaust pipe it says to locate it at least two inches down from the cylinder exhaust flange yeah so maybe forward maybe coming out this way is going to be the best way uh, and I understand each one has to be exactly the same amount down from the flange so that you don't uh, so they match with the temperature okay I put this uh, probe in coming out a little bit forward I figured I'd give it the most room possible if I came out this way I would have been close to the ignition wire and there's no point jamming things up in here so it's two and a quarter inches down it ends up being reamed to a number 30 this gets pulled in pretty tight and then they say to safety wire tie this uh, flap to the um, to the inside of the to the sensor base and then leave a loop in here I installed another pass through in the firewall uh, this is the one that you get oops it's still a little I uh, got the the ceiling underneath it uh, this is the one you get from aircraft spruce this is a one inch I got my CHT EGT harness from my panel company it's plugged in here I've routed it through the uh, firewall pass through I don't have the firewall insulation in there yet I've got one piece on this side but then there's another piece that goes in but I'll get that later so I'm grouping the left side and then my right side I'm thinking about running my left side down here maybe putting a, an Adele clamp here and then having run along the side here so that's kind of my plan for this side and I may hang a bracket here 
with a, uh, a clamp for them. Uh, my panel company did send me a bag of these small eye ring clamps. Uh, they're 422 in size, I think that's right, uh, which is really small. And these are kind of unusual uh, connections for wires, but this is what came with the sensors. I've got these um, O-rings crimped on. I've attached them with these little tiny screws and nuts. Uh, you got to use little fingers and little tools to get these on. Remember when you cut the wires, they're staggered, so don't just chop them off. You have to cut one longer and one shorter. Sometimes the red one is longer, sometimes the yellow one's longer, so be careful before you cut. So this uh, first exhaust gas temperature is on the number four cylinder. And I turned on my Garmin and uh, just learning to do the glass, touch the EGT CHT button down here. That opened up this panel and I can see my number four cylinder is at about 80 degrees, which is about the garage temperature right now. So it looks like we're good. I've got the sensor wires for the number two, number four cylinders on the left side completed. What I did is after attaching them all and putting my heat shrink on, uh, I then attached a clamp. Then I ran it through here, a couple zip ties, and then a couple of Dell clamps up here running the wires up to my pass through. Um, not 100% sure if this is how it's supposed to be done. It seemed to make sense. I've kept everything away. I've supported it, tied it up. This is the way I did it. Okay, it's probably a pretty good place to end. Uh, that section of the build took 20.8 hours. That brings my build time to 1162.2 hours. Uh, and that, as, as I've said previously, does not include my research time, which took as much time as the build time. Um, so moving along slowly, plugging along little by little, I guess. Um, the next episode, I'm going to put the fuel servo on, uh, attach and run the mixture and throttle cables, and probably get to the air box as well. So I look forward to doing that. Oh, and I put uh, jack lugs on the tires. I uh, highly recommend those. Uh, if you have a, a need to do a tire repair in, out in the open. So with that, thank you for watching. And remember, dream it, just build it.